Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and I just got back from moto camping on my 450L. I want to show you my light moto camping setup. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing and Maybe even hit that like button if you get something useful out of this video. So I just returned from my first moto camping trip on a dual sport motorcycle. Believe it or not, all the moto camping I've done has always been off of adventure bikes. I've never gone on a dual sport before. A lot of you made a lot of comments about how I'm an overpacker and there's no way I'll be able to do it on a dual sport because I can't take very much stuff. And so I just wanted to show you the setup in case people out there are wondering how to set up a moto camping kit, what to take moto camping, how to carry all the moto camping gear that they have on the their dual sport bike. I already made a video kind of talking about the bags, so I'm not going to spend a bunch of time talking about the bags. You can check that one out here. I'll link it for you. I'm going to show you how I packed the gear in here and what gear I took with me. That's sort of the idea for this video. Real quick, four bags on the bike, zigzag handlebar bag, buck and roll tank bag, coyote saddle bag, rogue dry bag. This is 39 liters. This is 18 liters. These two only had camera gear in them and my flask. So the only thing to really know about what I packed up here that's relevant to people that aren't filming other camping trips is my Moto Camp Nerd flask. Nine ounces, sturdy, love this thing. Uh, MotocampNerd.com, but it fits perfectly in this buck and roll tank bag, which I'm not entirely sure is a coincidence, but yeah. So that's the only piece of camping gear in these two bags. So we're just gonna focus on what's going on back here. You probably noticed that my tent footprint is up on top. This was nasty dirty this morning and really wet, very moist. So I didn't want it in any of the bags. I didn't want it in the, in the tent bag, getting the tent all nasty, because it'll just mold up if I store it like that. So I just kept it on the outside of the bag and put it underneath the beaver tail of my coyote bag here. And when I'm done, when it's dry, I'll put it back in the tent bag. But for now, I'm just gonna hang it up, probably on the handlebars actually, and let it dry, because it's still not dry. So here's my Rogue dry bag. I actually ended up getting things in a lot more compact setup when I left. So this doesn't really even have anything super uh, necessary for camping. I probably could have gotten by without it, believe it or not, haters. Uh, but let me just show you what's in here so that you can see how I packed it when I came back. So slippers, I, I don't like to wear my boots around camp if I don't have to, and these are these are lightweight, uh, pretty sturdy, and they, they pack down small, so I like those. Smart wool base layer, needed that. It was actually cold this morning. Smart wool beanie, thanks to Chris for hooking me up with those. I usually wear my Giant Loop. Uh, neck gaiter. In fact, this is, in my opinion, probably the most versatile and useful piece of ADV gear out there. But I left it on the ground overnight. And it was really nasty, so I didn't want to put it on this morning. So that's got to get washed. So that's why it was in the bag. My pants, my camp pants. These are my shants, as uh, as Slow Eddie calls them. But they're zip off, so they're pants and shorts. That's really nice to have when the weather changes a lot, like it does here in the fall. And the only other thing in this bag is jerky. So I had some food left over. On the way out, I had my table and my chair in this bag. So I'm not saying that you don't need it. The chair I ended up getting into the coyote and the table actually broke on the trip. So I left it in the garbage can at the campground. Don't try to Captain Morgan stand on your flimsy aluminum tables. It's bad for them. So that's sad because I use that thing on a lot of trips, but it's gone now. So this thing's nice because it would make an ideal sort of backup pillow if you needed it to, or uh, I was going to use it as a cooler yesterday, dump ice and my beers in there, but Strav actually had his Tillamook, so we use that instead. But that's what's in the Rogue. That's it. It's empty. Now the Coyote. Coyote's a cool bag. It sits where your passenger would, so it's not in your way. And it, you know the weight is in a good place on the motorcycle. So this is a roll top bag, so I'm unrolling it. It's got Velcro closure. That's pretty cool. So what all is in this bag? Well, let me show you. Toiletries bag, contact solution, deodorant, all that stuff. I actually took two dehydrated meals with me on this trip and didn't end up eating either one of them. These are actually keto, so Next Mile makes keto meals if you're looking for keto stuff. But uh, we ended up, I ended up just getting food at the store when I went to get beer. Bear spray, always take my bear spray. This is my Possible's pouch. I have a whole video on what goes in here, but you can see my coffee cup. I actually put my pump for my air mattress in here. Ibuprofen, all my coffee making stuff, my headlamp, my knife, my permethrin neck gaiter, extra paracord bug spray, all that stuff is in this bag. And I took my gravity filter this time, didn't end up needing it, but that packs down really small as you can see. This is my 20 degree enlightened equipment quilt, which I took on the Wobder. This is very comfortable and packs down very small and it's really warm, so I like that a lot. This is my Nemo Philo, my favorite camp pillow of all time. Love that. This is kind of an interesting thing that was definitely a little bit of a luxury. So 
Long story short, I used to have a Diamond Park 30. I actually melted through the top part, but the bottom half was still useful, and it actually makes a really interesting bottom sheet to use with your quilt. It's got a little bit of a feather gusset around the outside, and it's got the pillow barn and all that. So I took it because it packs down super small, and I had room just to see if it would help me stay any warmer because uh, it's a little colder now that it's fallen. It did. So this is just the bottom half of a big Agnes Diamond Park. Uh, you can see the melt hole and... Yeah, uh, if you want to hear about how that got melted, maybe we'll talk about it on a live stream after party at some point. It's a long story. I don't want to explain it in this video. Also on the left side over here, my Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2 bike packing tent. Love this thing. It's so compact and so easy to use. It sets up super fast. Once that ground cloth dries, footprint, I'll put it in here, but it's not in there right now. That's it for the left side. On the right here, I actually took my smaller Big Agnes sleeping pad to save room, my Aircore Ultra, and then my, this is my Sea to Summit Aeros Premium Pillow. I just shove it in the same bag. Coffee. This is my new Micah Basin camp chair that Mono Camp Nerd sent me. This thing is great because it's rated for a heavy guy. It's all metal. There's no plastic. So like the buckle where all the pieces come together is not plastic like it is in some other chairs. This thing's super comfortable and easy to set up. So I like it a lot. Uh, travel humidor. Couple Mr. Puff Puffs in there. And my jet boil. That's it. That's all I had on this trip. You can see the bag is empty. Nothing down there. Nothing over there. All empty. Uh, and that's that's my Coyote saddlebag. That's 40 liters of stuff. So that's it. That's the lightweight kit. A lot less than I usually take if you compare it to my BDR packing video. But I survived the night. And the only thing I really found myself missing was like some paper towels. I didn't have any paper towels to like wipe the water out of my jet boil when I was done using it and stuff. So that's something I'll, I'll try to bring in the future. Did have to make a run to town for food and beer, but that's par for the course anyway, most of the time. So not really that worried about it. So what do you guys think about the ultralight setup? It's not even ultralight. What do you guys think about my lightweight setup? My less complicated setup? Anything that's missing? Anything that you could take out? There may be a few luxuries in here. Let me know. But I just want to make this video because I was unpacking, literally unpacking from the first trip. And I know some of you may be wondering how much stuff you can bring on a dual sport. And here's a good example of what I took and successfully survived and overnight had a good time doing it. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you.